It's hard to make a deep tech company, but when they work, they work big. SpaceX landed a rocket, and they're worth $175 billion. NVIDIA built the GPUs that enable both AI and crypto, and they're worth $1.5 trillion. Software used to dominate Silicon Valley for the past at least 10 years, but now deep tech is making a run. But there's just one problem. Nobody knows what deep tech means. After I published a video about SaaS being over, I got a ton of messages, literally hundreds of messages from deep tech founders that wanted me to check out their idea. But the problem was, their definition of deep tech wasn't necessarily my definition of deep tech. I heard from people building email apps. I heard from people building ways to invest your money without ever losing. I talked to one guy who's gonna put Dogecoin on the moon, which, you know, deep moonshot, maybe a deep tech, debatable. <laughs> but those aren't my definition. I think that deep tech is when there is primarily technical risk and basically no market risk, meaning that the question that you have to answer as a deep tech entrepreneur is not, will people buy it? but instead, can we build it? Deep tech companies are companies like Helion, which is building a nuclear fusion reactor that could harness near limitless energy. Solugen is making industrial chemicals from biological feedstock rather than fossil fuels. And of course, my company, Astronis, which builds small satellites that get the developing world online. The world needs and already buys lots of connectivity and chemicals and energy. There is no doubt that if you have a better, cheaper way to produce those things, that people will eventually buy it. The question is not, will people buy cheaper energy? The question is, can we actually build a fusion reactor? That's what deep tech is. So what you can immediately intuit is that deep tech is very different from a normal software startup. Deep tech companies take longer to generate revenue. They require more money to get going just to build their first prototype. They require different kinds of engineers. It's not just software engineers, but it's also, you know, physicists and chemists and biologists, but also electrical engineers and mechanical engineers and maybe aerospace engineers. And deep tech companies spend their money very differently than software companies do. They have to buy hardware, they have to buy facilities, they have to have people. I mean, software companies also have to have very talented engineers, but the majority of their other spend is probably AWS and ads, which really hard tech companies are not buying that much of. Now, these are real problems that deep tech companies are going to have to solve if they're going to live up to the promise. And I believe, of course, that they will. The reason I believe they will is that the pot of gold at the end of this rainbow is so massive. It turns out if you build net new capability for humanity, then that is both impactful and lucrative. Many deep tech companies have absolutely absurd market sizes. You know, when you're a software startup, you have to convince people that, you know, there are this many dog walkers in the US, and if they all spent 100 bucks, then we have a big enough market. You don't have to do any of that for these deep tech markets. The world's power generation market is worth $2 trillion today. <laughs> it's expected to double in the next few years. The connectivity market is similarly big, and it's growing at 20 to 30% every single year. So in the end, it's pretty simple. Deep tech is more lucrative, it is more impactful for the world, and it's just more fun. <laughs> it's just plain cooler. That's why deep tech has taken over Silicon Valley, and that's why I think deep tech is here to stay.